pretty successful here. We're allowed to, to let go because Boston have improved on their squad. Yeah, George Willis particularly had a really good season a couple of years ago and uh, got player of the year, was captain and then didn't even really figure last season. So I guess that's the brutal cutthroat nature of football that there's no room for sentiment and the manager felt last year that Peter Crook was the better option and, uh, and gave him the games. This year he's upgraded again in his eyes. He sees Ross Fitzsimons as a as a better goalkeeper than Peter Crook and that's just the way it happens. I don't think George Willis bears any grudges but having said that I'm sure he's de determined to have a stormer today. As you can uh, probably hear Craig and I are fighting against the Tannoy system here so uh, he's going to read the Boston United team out in a second I'm just going to let him uh, go for it because I'm struggling to hear Craig I'm sure Craig's struggling to hear me um, as the two teams are now out Boston in their home kit of uh, Amber with uh, Blackshaw so let's just hear the Boston's team Number three is Scott Duxbury four is Tom Platt six Luke Shields nine Jordan Burrow 12 Pierce Bird 17, Conor De Mayo, 18, Terry Hawkridge, 21, Fraser Preston, and 22, Joe Leasley. Belgrim subs are 5, Scott Diner, 8, Paul Green, 11, Jay Rollins, 13, Peter Crook, and 15, Tyrell Warren. Referee today, Mr. Dean Watson. So that's the Boston United side, and uh, just the one change, Conor De Mayo coming in for Paul Green from, from last week. The two teams are out, the two captains, uh, Dan Bradley of Alfred to new Craig Singleton says very, very good play. Was it Fylde File they signed in from? Yeah, Kidderminster he's played for. He's had a couple of spells with Fylde. And like I say, one of the best footballers in this league. Um, and uh, Luke Shields. Sec second spell with Alfred and he was there a few years ago. So obviously somebody who, who knows the club pretty well. So the referee is uh, about to get the game underway. Referee Dean Watson. Boston United shooting as we look in the main stand from left to right towards the, the openness of the... Uh, well, there's no stand to our right at the moment. They're going to be building another terrace and a, a, a sports uh, club behind the goal uh, in the not-too-distant future. Alfredton shooting towards the already built terrace to the left there and there, away strip of... I've just been trying to work this, this colour out. Uh, what are we saying? Navy and pink, it's clusters. That, that's what we'll go with then, navy and pink. And Boston United have the ball with Fraser Preston now coming down the left-hand side. He's, he's got the overlapping run. Boston with a chance to get the ball in the box early on. Now towards Hawkridge, it's just about dealt with by Alfredson but Boston with two to now on the edge of the area he'll shoot it's blocked an early pressure from the Pilgrims yeah I was looking at my watch there thinking I need to get this time right if there's a goal we had 22 seconds last week against AFC Fold at this very end so uh, I thought maybe it was the Pilgrims turn but uh, not Fold Alfredson defended that well and uh, didn't didn't allow it to get through to George Willis so uh, a good start from the Pilgrims Boston have a throw with uh, with Tootle the Pilgrims Looking to try and attack as Preston gives it to Hawkridge. Now Tootle right hand side wins a corner. Yeah, good play again. Preston, Hawkridge, and Tootle looking to bomb on from right back, and it gives Joe Leasley the first opportunity to deliver one of his uh, telling corner deliveries. Joe Leasley in, in, in the squad uh, today. Dan Hodge not on the bench. Still uh, not quite fit enough, and it's going to be Boston's first corner of this match then. 0 0. Still staying in the second minute. Leasley looking at his options. Referee. Telling him to, to go for it. He comes towards that near post, doesn't get past the first man, it's headed away. Boston pick us up with Terry Hawkridge now as they look to try and form another attack and he plays it across the field. Boston still plenty of men for here but Tootle decides to go back to Fitzsimmons in the Boston goal. He's uh, looking for his option, still plenty of attacking threat for the Pilgrims here as uh, Fitzsimmons goes long. Jordan Burrow first contribution from him as he gets up in the air. Hawkridge decided not to try and chase that one down and Alfreton will clear and they're going to come forward now. Luke Rawson won't get on the end of that and Boston have a throw in. Yep, good defending from Clackstone, the, usually the right back, but he's playing at left back today. So uh, it'll be interesting to see how he performs on the on the wrong side as such. But a, a good start from the Pilgrims. Got that first corner, didn't come to anything, but I think they've uh, made their attacking intent known in these opening stages this afternoon. We were in the third minute and then Alfreton's team, George Willis, former Pilgrim keeper in goal. Uh, then it is as uh, Boston have the ball 
Midfield Alfred now have it. There's a shout of handball against Rawson. Goes back to Fitzsimmons. Um, so two Josh Claxton, three Will Atkinson, four Connor Branson, five former Pilgrim James Jones, six Adam Lund, seven Dominic Smith, eight Dan Bradley the captain, nine Luke Rawson, ten Bobby Johnson, and eleven top scorer Elliot Reeves. As uh, Boston come forward, I'll tell you the Afton subs in a second as Preston now has it for the Pilgrim. Really good play by Fraser Preston now. He's onto the edge of the area. Shoot! Blocked by one of the Afton uh, defenders. Great play that by Preston and now Alfreton are going to look to just bring this one away. It's been a really positive start from Boston United. Alfreton sub there, Nathan Fox, Danny Clark, Toby Lees, Jake Day and another former Pilgrim in Nicky Walker. Top scorer here a couple of seasons ago. And it's Duxbury now for Boston, plays it over the top towards Preston. He looks to bring it down on the edge of the area. Alfreton get it clear. Boston picked it up in the midfield with DeMeo, his ball forward. Hawkridge now will hold. Comes inside Terry Hawkridge. Now he's... Uh, to dictate play. Leesley now on the edge of the penalty area, being forced back before finding Duxbury on the left hand side. Boston, great pressure this early on here. Nil nil. Duxbury now running towards penalty area, drills it in near post, and it's cleared away for a corner. Yeah, and needed defending. I think James Jones, the ex Pilgrim, just nipping in front of Jordan Burrow and making sure that Duxbury cross didn't get too much further. And United have their second corner, which Leesley will take from the left hand side this time. This will be a, an outswinger from uh, Leesley. Plenty of men forward again from the back for Boston. Shields and Bird will be a threat as Leesley plays it into that penalty area. It goes over everybody. And Terry Hawkridge will pick it up on the right hand side of the penalty area. Does a step over before going backwards. He's been well uh, pressured by Bobby Johnson and in the end he's forced backwards. Boston now play it forward with two for Jordan Burrow. Will look to chase this. George Willis has come a long way out for this. Burrow does really well to get the ball off the former Pilgrim goalkeeper. Terry Hawkridge now. Willis is backing goal for Alfreton. Preston has it on the edge of the area, running into the area now, Fraser Preston showing great intent and that'll be a throw in to Boston. Yeah, very nearly <laughs> another corner, but uh, yeah, George Willis was coming for that and uh, a long way for that. was running out of penalty area to handle it <laughs> and uh, thought better of it in the end, but managed to force Borough fairly wide and no real harm done from an Alfreton point of view. Pilgrims have started well and Tootle now has it, De Mayo scored a great goal last week but he's given the ball away and Alfreton looked to bring it away with Elliot Reeves and uh, he wins his side of throwing. Well, it looks like the Pilgrims are potentially playing 4-4-2 today, Fraser Preston right up top with Jordan Burrow, Leesley wide left, Hawkridge wide right with De Mayo and Platt in the middle so first time that United have really operated with that system so far this season. Do you think that's a good thing? So change that today? Well, it's obviously been done with a with a certain opposition in mind. Obviously, looking to get real width into the play with two and out out and out wingers. Fraser Preston, to my mind, has, has not really played up front so far, but perhaps would have been a a more conventional formation had Thewlis been available. But over to Fraser Preston to see what he can deliver today. Chance to show what he can do in an attacking uh, position, a, a striking position. He's uh, intercepted that one from Adam Lund and gives away a throw in. Um, Jordan Thulis and Mitch Rose, is this, is this the last game? No, they've, they've, they've got one more. Yeah, they? they've got um, Farsley Celtic on Monday, so they'll be back for this return fixture next Saturday at Alfreton. Um, but yeah, it's uh, from suddenly having a really strong looking squad with plenty of options, it's now, obviously those two are suspended. Dan Hodge is injured, Jay Rollins has been injured, Paul Green's not fully fit, and uh, you're suddenly uh, a little bit down on numbers, and. Uh, but still a very capable 16 selected by Craig Elliott today. As you can see, Alfton have a throw. I was going to ask you if they've got a, a player with a long throw, and it looks like it's Adam Lund who's uh, going to take this one. It's going to be a long one in towards that penalty area. Boston, some defending to do, and in the end it needed slicing over by Pierce Bird, and it's a corner to Alfreton now. Yeah, Lund, the right-back, has got a long throw, as demonstrated just there, looking for the big men. Luke Rawson's a big lad playing at number nine for Alfreton today, but... They win their first corner now, which Bobby Johnson's going to take over in the far corner. This is where Alfreton will be a threat. Set pieces, Boston need to man for man know what they're doing, and it'll, uh, it'll be Bobby Johnson. Scored last week against Kings Lynn with this uh, corner. There's a free header on goal there. It was, uh, it was Adam Lund with the header, and Boston's marking was all over the place, and they've got away with that one. It goes wide. Got some big lads in there with Jones, uh, Branson, Smith, Rawson, I think. Lund was almost the one that crept under the radar, but he got his head on that Johnson corner and he was disappointed he didn't get that on target. Went yeah, he? I was sat right behind it and, it and it looked like it was just going to drop wide and thankfully it, it did, but I don't think it was far wide. Mm. It is still nil nil. We're in the eighth minute here on BBC Radio Lincolnshire's online commentary, Boston United streaming service. Self Dale Story, Craig Singleton. 
and uh, Boston United looking to try and get something as Burrow won that flick on, but Preston shouldn't quite get on the end of it as George Willis clears for the visitors. Shields wins the first header, Duxbury wins the next one. Boston, a bit of defending to do here as Rawson brings it down. Bradley now trying to create. Now Lund, the right back, he's been involved a lot early on here. Boston defending to do it. It's Lund with the cross. Leavely did well to block the cross, but concedes another corner. And hopefully, uh, Craig, Boston will deal with this one better than the last one. That's right, yeah. Leavely tracking his man all the way to uh, make sure that cross didn't come in fully. And Johnson has now got a, another opportunity to make it... Uh, a telling impact for Alfreton. It's two corners apiece now in these first ten minutes. United reasonably threatening from theirs, but Alfreton have had the clearest chance so far, haven't they, with that effort mm, from Lund definitely. just wide. It'll be Bobby Johnson to take his second corner of the game. Nil-nil. It's a, a high one towards the uh, back post. It's Jordan Burrow that did really well defensively there to get a touch on that. Now Boston are going to look to try and bring this one away. Preston making the movement uh, up front. Tries to get up there, Fraser Preston, but Boston picking up DeMeo, who's joined the attack now. Connor DeMeo is into the penalty area. Now two to the furthest forward. That's a great back heel towards Preston, and Boston have a corner, and that was really good counter-attacking play. Looks like it's going to be a good game, doesn't it? it Both sides does. Um, going for it. Both sides forcing. Corners are plenty in these first ten minutes, and uh, like you say, Leesley's breakaway from Burrow's good defensive header. It enabled Tootle to back heel the ball into what he hoped was Fraser Preston's path, but... Dom Smith swept it up in third corner coming up for United. Be taken by Joe Leesley from the right hand side. This will be an in swinger. Oh, crowded round the Alfredton goalkeeper as uh, Leesley, and again the second time from this side, he doesn't get it past the first man. Tootle does really well to find Hawkridge. He'll cross it. No, he won't. He'll give it to Leesley now back on the right hand side. It's his cross into that penalty area and it's headed away. And in the end, the referee sees a foul and that's a free kick to Alfredton. Yeah, good. Uh, Good covering from Conor Branson. Tom Platt just give him a little bit, a bit of a nudge. Which allows George Willis to take the sting out of things for Alfredson. Take stock and we've got to 10 minutes and we're goalless. It's been a very uh, entertaining first 10 minutes but as Craig says still Boston United nil, Alfredson Town nil. Boston's next game away at Farsley before going to Alfredson in the new year. This Christmas double header that they, they do in the non-league where teams play each other home and away Christmas and sorry Boxing Day and January the 2nd this year though instead of New Year's Day it's not fallen too badly really the fixtures with Christmas Day being a Friday obviously gives you Saturdays as Boxing Day and uh, and the 2nd so not uh, not too much hardship this year obviously a game on Monday Monday afternoon at Farsley but probably as well spread really as it ever can be it was a tricky place to go Farsley Celtic it was a thing about pitch last season if I remember correctly as uh, Jordan Burrow gets up, Preston, that's a really good turn. Fraser Preston, he just can't quite find Terry Hawkridge. The pass was on, he just couldn't quite get it through. Alfreton clear, but Fraser Preston's been heavily involved in this opening 11 minutes. Oh, I'd love, love to have seen him back himself there and, and go and have a shot. He'd yeah. done the hard work, he'd won the Great ball, turn. spun away, and he's looking down the barrel of the goal, but tried to be too unselfish, really, and played Hawkridge in, and, and the ball wasn't really there. Terry Hawkridge winning a throw in uh, right in front of us here at uh, United's wonderful uh, new ground. I don't know how long we'll keep calling it new ground. I'm sure it'll be for a few months yet. But uh, my first visit here, very impressed. As uh, Tootle takes this throw in for Boston United, 0-0. Preston offering some movement, as is Terry Hawkridge. Matt Tootle gives it to Preston, back to Tootle. Looks for the run of Jordan Burrow. Some really good movement from Boston United. Here's Hawkridge, the claims of offside from Alfreton that looked like it had gone out for a corner and it has and another chance for Joe Leasley to get the ball in the box yeah corner number four coming up for United not really made too much of one of these opportunities yet but hopefully they will sooner rather than later but like you say Alfreton quite a fearsome opponent in that respect they don't give too much away from set pieces they're a big a big side so United are going to have to weave a little bit of magic here, I think, to find a breakthrough. And Joe Leasley, he's had two from this side. He ain't got past the first man yet, so hopefully he can, with the in-swinger, get it past the first man. And he does, but Alfred just about deal with it. Boston trying to get a, a shot in. I think it was Burrow trying to get on the end of that, and he's just huffed away from one of the Alfred defenders, and it'll be a throw into Boston down by the visiting dugout. Matt Tootle looking to take it quickly and go back to Fitzsimmons in the Boston United goal, although saying that he's a, a long way out at the moment as Ross Fitzsimmons goes. Long, looking for the head of Jordan Burrow. Burrow doesn't get a touch, but the ball carries on on its way through to George Willis. It does, yeah. Burrow not able to get his head on that one. James Jones 
did enough to divert his attentions and George Willis just out quite comfortably to the mop up for the Reds who aren't in red today they're in navy and pink so navy and pink still nil nil I'm sure they'll be in red when these two meet again on January the 2nd and uh, Boston have it now with uh, Leesley looking for the run of Burrow. It's intercepted by Jones of Alfreton. That'll be a throw into the Pilgrims just inside their own half. I think you've got the return game as well, haven't you? I have at the moment, yes. Yes. Uh, I always enjoy going to Alfreton. I know that the commentary view is very low, but apart from that, it's always been an enjoyable Yeah, we're very very close to the action there, aren't we? So About we are one row away. My, uh, my visits with Gainsborough have seen Trinity concede four every time I go, so... <laughs> Uh, but Boston got it, I think I was there last season. It was last season, drew 1-1, one, one. Jake Wright. Yeah, first away um, game that was, yes, wasn't it? Yes, I was there with, uh, with Michael Horton, so a little bit more lucky with Boston than I am Gainsborough. <laughs> As, uh, Boston United have a throw in. Duxbury is going to take this one in towards Jordan Burrow in the penalty area. Burrow wins the header. Uh, it was cleared away by Claxton. Duxbury has it again now on the left-hand side, looking to run at Bradley. Scott Duxbury, the Boston United player, comes inside now. He's got it on his right foot before crossing it towards that far post. And George Willis, the Alfton keeper, gathers him. Yeah, Duxbury coming in field, but on his right foot. Didn't really look like troubling George Willis too much there. And he was able to come out and collect. George Willis, the same player of the year here two seasons ago, was it? Player of the season, I think. Yeah, I think it was 18 19. He had um, a particularly good year. He was, he was captain, captain at the time, yeah. yeah. Um, then was replaced by Peter Crook, who then since has been, um, as in as in number one, has been replaced by uh, Fitzsimmons. And Boro now has it, looking for the Fraser Preston. He's just offside. I think he knew he was offside. I think everybody knew he was offside. <laughs> <laughs> he was just waiting for him to make that motion to go after the ball, and the flag went up. But uh, disappointing because Boro had just flicked it round the corner, but Preston had gone a fraction too early. One of the questions I asked Craig Elliott pre-match was, this is, I think it's the fourth game now they've played at this, this new ground. Have, have the team and the management, have they settled in? Would you say Boston as a whole has settled into their new home? Well, I feel that I have and the, uh, the staff have. I can't really speak for the manager and players, but I would imagine so. It's the first, it's the first time in about 30 years that we've actually played four home Saturdays in a month. So there's a stat for you. There is a stat. I wasn't aware of that. I think it was that. 1981. November, November 81, I think, was the, the last time of a, of a full calendar month of Saturday home fixtures. And uh, the Pilgrims have done it here at Pilgrim Way, right. albeit without any fans. So, mm. yeah, I suppose in that respect, they're, they're well versed now. They've got into a bit of a routine. Just hope the uh, the victories will, will start to flow now after that penalty shootout drama last weekend. Alfreton have a throw in, which will be taken long by Adam Lund. Already shown they're a threat from set pieces. The visitor it's played in. One of the Boston players is down. It was flicked on but gathered in by Fitzsimmons. And he'll just take the sting out of this one. Two to Offord, but he was uh, being marked. And in the end, he, he rolls it out to Bird. Nil-nil. Pierce Bird bringing this one forward before going long. Looking for the head of Jordan Burrow. Very effective in the air. Burrow does well again there. Preston now has it. Terry Hawkridge on the right-hand side now. It's his ball in. Blocked by... The first man, Platt picks it up in midfield before giving it back to Hawkridge. Right hand side, two men with him. He's uh, looking for a run from Tuchel. It's intercepted and cleared away by Elliot Reeves. Reeves wanted to let that run, didn't he? But wasn't quite going quick enough. No, was it? wasn't on the ball. And uh, I think he made a particularly great job of that clearance in the end. He gave the Pilgrims a throw. Coming forward again. Sorry, Craig, in um, I'm interrupting you there. So no, Hawkridge played it in. Just going to say, I think Reeves perhaps could have dealt with that a little bit better. but. Mm. No harm done for his side. Boston looking to pick this one in, uh, up in midfield. It's a slide tackle by De Mayo. Did well to win it back. Platt now has it. Gives it to Connor De Mayo. He finds Hawkridge. And again, it's good attacking play by Boston. Terry Hawkridge now is into the penalty area. He's been well shadowed by Alfreton at the back. But Hawkridge is a left footer into the penalty area. They're struggling to clear. And in the end, it was a foul by Leesley at the far post. And a free kick to Alfreton. Yeah, I think he just caught Mitch, uh, Adam Lund as the ball came in from Hawkridge but he just couldn't couldn't get the cross in could he Clackstone marshalled him pretty well made him spin back onto his left foot and took some of the potency out of the cross it's been a, a positive opening in 17 minutes Boston not really creating any chances yet the only chance of note went to Alfreton so far yeah the Lund header wasn't it from mm. Johnson's corner for, for all United's good player they've not had that clear cut opening yet and forced George Willis into a save so they'll be looking to 
get an effort on target as soon as possible. And whereas when you and I were last together, Craig, I think we'd had about 10 chances by now. Away at Blythe. Oh dear, that was... <laughs> um, I actually uh, listened back to... Well, not our commentary, but the commentary on the... Uh, Oh, the, the on the highlight on reel. On the Blythe streaming, and <laughs> even they sort of were saying, another one, another one, another one. And it was... Uh, it was one-sided, one-nil, but oh. chances-wise, anyway, I've ever seen. And then when uh, Blythe finally got the chance with about ten minutes to go, we thought, oh, no. <laughs> I remember it well. They missed it, thankfully. Boston now, Fraser Preston picks it up. He's into the penalty area. Preston with a chance. Good save by Willis in the goal, and that's a free kick. Uh, sorry, a corner for Boston. I thought the referee given a free kick there. Fraser Preston, first clear cut chance. We've just said Boston haven't had any, and really he should have done better. Yeah, but <laughs> the defence that he's on his right foot, you could tell he wanted to shift it, but couldn't. Had to take the shot on. But George Willis out really quickly with a smothering save. 18 minutes, and United have their fifth corner. Which Joe Leesley will take. So Preston there, one on one. Willis did well to save. It's uh, Leesley into the six yard box. Again, it's the first man on that post heading it away. DeMeo now will look to try and bring it up. Uh, bring it down in midfield, he's fouled and Boston have another set piece here to try and uh, create another chance Yeah, I didn't see that I was typing, but uh, corner got cleared and United won themselves a free kick which Leesley fancies having a crack at not, not a shooting chance, but chance to whip this in, Hawkridge over the ball as well the big men are forward, different angle on the set piece this time, different from a corner so let's see if United can make the most of this one Can Boston Great, another chance. It is Leesley with that free kick. Shields heads it the, uh, the wrong way. He was being well marked there by the defence. And in the end, Alfton clear. And uh, Reeves will chase this down, but it's cleared away by Fitzsimmons in the Boston United goal. Jordan Burrow and James Jones. That is going to be a battle for the afternoon as DeMeo tries to find Leesley's run. And in the end, it's cleared by Alfred and Reeves for them. We'll try and get at the end of that. And in the end, he's offside and Boston United have a free kick. Jones done a good job on Burrow so far. He's not really giving him a sniff aerially. Interesting to see how that one develops as the afternoon goes on. But United very much in the ascendancy, but not able to get that breakthrough just yet. It's just the one chance of note. Fraser Preston through, but as uh, Craig Singleton said, maybe I was a little bit harsh. He was on his right foot. He was a very good save as well by George Willis, who was always a good shot stopper here as Burrow wins the, uh, the flick on. Boston will pick it up now with Bird. He uh, is fouled by Luke Rawson, and Boston have another free kick. I think George Willis is a good goalkeeper. He was. I do. He was unlucky here. Great lad, um, one of the best around, and, and uh, he, d he did have a good season. But you can't really argue with Peter Crook's form last season, barring the barring the two the two high-profile errors. He was brilliant, really, all season. So um, these things happen in football. George, I think George accepted that and got himself another good club at this level. And sounds like he's flourishing again from a personal point of view. Boston United are coming forward. The free kick didn't come to a lot, and Leesley plays the ball in. And there is Willis to, to to gather in. And one thing, Craig Singleton, that will feel strange is me watching George Willis and not asking him for a <laughs> for an interview from you. Yeah, I know you like the George <laughs> Willis interview, but I think that dates back to the, his time at Gainsborough. He's, he's, he's two spells at Gainsborough. And of course, he went back on loan last season. He did. He was so. he was very good at Gainsborough last season. Uh, they were having some goalkeeping problems at Gainsborough, and uh, he was clearly a lot a lot better. Nothing against the rest, but. Yeah, but then this season, to be fair, Trinity done well in goal as well. Yeah, I don't think he should. Uh, I don't. I think this. Is, I think this is his level. I don't think he would. I uh, agree. I don't think he would should be necessarily forced to drop down. Um, and uh, as that's obviously proved signing for Alfreton this season. And it's his second spell at uh, Alfreton. He had a loan spell about five years ago uh, here as well. But. Uh, very good number one and I know I won't get through the commentary without talking about George <laughs> Willis so there it is <laughs> so Boston United have a throw in line with the edge of the penalty area Matt Tootles to take it still 0-0 22 minutes gone here on BBC Radio Linkshire and the Boston United uh, live stream as uh, Tootle takes it in towards Preston so really well to find a bit of space Preston now he's on his left foot shoots pushed away by Willis in goal for Alfreton a really good save Fraser Preston has been the main threat for Boston so far Craig and that one was on his left foot and that one good was travelling and George Willis, like we say, is capable of pulling those saves out, and I think that was a good save. It mm. was good height, but at a distance uh, uh, to his right hand side. And, uh, and Fraser, Fraser Preston, Preston, unlucky he's, there. He's getting past the Alfredon defenders, isn't he? Pretty well, uh, a lot at the moment. Yeah, he's uh, he's the threat. I think the uh, the decision to play him right up top today with Jordan Burrow is bearing fruit so far. Boston, it's a cross into the penalty area by Duxbury, headed away, and uh, that'll be a foul, will it? And Yes, the referee looking to play advantage, but it looked like Platt is going to get the ball. He is. It was a foul on Reeves, 
And uh, I think Alfreton will be glad just to take a little bit of uh, sting out of this game because Boston at the moment well on top. Fraser Preston, the man of the moment. Two chances had one, well, both really well saved by George Willis. One on his right foot, which the, the uh, former Pilgrim keeper smothered. And the other one, a bending effort from the edge of the penalty area from Preston, which uh, is a flying save from the Alfreton town number one. And it's he who is going to take this free kick for Alfreton. Nil-nil. We're in the 23rd minute. And uh, Alfreton haven't really looked a threat since, apart from set pieces. So hopefully that hasn't jinxed it as Willis's free kick goes all the way through to Fitzsimmons in the other goal. And the, the Boston United number one who's had an excellent season so far. And it's his kick goes long. Jones for Alfreton will head that away. Platt will try and pick it up in midfield. He does and gives it to DeMeo now. And he finds Terry Hawkridge and Tootle's making a really good run. Can he get in front of his man? Reeves has done really well to track him there. And Boston have a throw in. Toodle just didn't quite have the pace to get there, did he? Reeves tracked him all the way. But uh, good defending from Reeves, good attacking intent from United. It's uh, Toodle to take that throw in Hawkridge now, and he is on the edge of the area, chips it in. Willis called for him, but it's headed away, rightfully, in my opinion, by Alfred and Town, as Hawkridge now has it on the edge of the penalty. One of them players who goes all over the place, and he looks for so Duxbury on the left hand side now. Duxbury for Boston comes back onto his right foot. Trying to get uh, across in Lund, the right back for Alfton, marking him well, but Duxbury running, well, jogging towards the penalty area. It's a low ball into Preston now. Preston looking to turn. Can he get a shot away here, Fraser? Preston, he's done well to keep the ball in. Leasley now on the left hand side, plays it in towards Jordan Burrow, and now Boston with a chance. Oh, and Fraser Preston has dragged it wide. Three chances now for Preston, and that was probably the clearest of the lot, wasn't it? Yes. What was he, about eight yards out, and uh, again on his right foot, rolled it wide of the far post. And United should be in front. You can you can hear um, Billy Heath. You can probably hear him in the background of, uh, of this commentary. Every time Boston, he, he's just shouting, it's too easy. Boston are getting past the Alfredton defenders at will at the moment. They've, they've got to make most of this pressure because at the moment it is still nil-nil. Here on BBC Radio Lincolnshire, online commentary is George Willis in his uh, bright boots. He's going to take this goal kick for Alfreton. Boston uh, win it back, and that looked like a foul on, on Bird. And Boston have a free kick. Yeah, I think uh, they just felt the uh, full force of an Alfreton challenge. But as Billy's reminding his players, they need to be a little bit more switched on. One or two just make, trying to make a, make a reprieve in his eyes that he's not too happy from the sidelines, and they uh, want to be... Avoiding a few harsh words at half time. Fitzsimmons with this free kick for Boston Jordan. Burrow and uh, Dom Smith all over each other there. And the referee, in my opinion, rightfully waving playoff. Both teams claiming they want a free kick. And in the end, Boston have a throw in um, on the edge of the penalty area, which Tootle takes. Terry Hawkridge now has. He's got two players around him, but he still finds some space and delivers a cross. It goes over Burrow. In comes Leesley. Really well defended there by Lund for Alfreton. And it'll be cleared away by Dan Bradley. And Alfreton will. Just want their attackers to maybe form a little bit of an attack, but Boston win it back, and that's a foul on De Mayo, and another free kick to Boston. Yeah, that was uh, another opportunity of sorts, wasn't it, Leesley? Burrow initially, Leesley unable to get on that cross. Terry Hawkins dug it out really well, but uh, United not able to capitalise. But like you say, they have another set piece now inside midway inside the half that they're attacking, which Joe Leesley's going to deliver from the left flank. Leasley's been on all the set pieces so far for the Pilgrims. Nil-nil. It'll be him with his uh, right foot into that uh, penalty area. Tom Platt's the target at the back post. And it needed dealing with by Connor Branson. And that'll be corner number six. Number six for, for Boston. Sometimes don't manage to keep count too well, but Are you, the you fact we'd got them so early this time. You on the corners, Craig. I, I haven't even made note. I knew, no. I knew you'd know. Probably lose count second half, but <laughs> I'm sure this is number six. Fourth one from this side two from the other. Joe Leasley will take it left-footed in swinger for the uh, the Pilgrims. Nil-nil. And it comes towards that penalty area. It's flicked on by Platt and he's headed away and it needed dealing with by Alfreton. Looked like it might have gone into the back of the net but Platt. Duxbury picks it up on the uh, halfway line but he's given the ball away to Reeves of Alfreton and Lund will clear this. And Alfreton will look to try and bring it forward themselves now with Atkinson. Boston, some defending to do here. It's a ball over to the left-hand side. It was over hit and Luke Rawson in the end ends up nowhere near there but Tom Platt he's, I mean, we, he's often a threat from set pieces and there he was again yeah deft little flick really wasn't it I don't know if it would have gone in but it was heading towards 
the far corner whether someone would have intercepted on the way not sure I'd like to see that one again but again United getting into good areas winning set pieces but just not quite taking advantage it's they that come forward looking for the the head of uh, Burrow Alfreton with Rawson uh, sorry Bradley trying to pick this one up and uh, Luke Shields he's fouled and it's a free kick to Boston yeah I think Luke Dan Shields Bradley near enough down <coughs> I think he near enough stood on him didn't he as they uh, ran for the ball we said last week it's uh, Luke Shields was hobbling about a bit at times last week but it takes a lot for him to come off doesn't it I don't think I've seen him come off in a such a key player isn't he for Boston United the captain he is yeah I think he's felt that hasn't he like I said I think Bradley just sort of landed on him but wasn't particularly malicious but uh, just a bit untidy really the referee's not not booked him or anything no no uh, no clamour for a yellow card, but uh, I'm sure it'll be okay. It's uh, and with with Pierce Bird now at the club, it's three centre halves. At least th there is, and hopefully, uh, Shield stays on. But there's the defensive cover because often it's been a case of having to play players in different positions, hasn't it? If the defenders have needed covering. Yeah, I think Terrell Warren has been the backup centre half for the last few weeks, and even he's not been on the bench at times. So the manager's sort of taken a calculated gamble to to not have any defensive cover there. But yeah, now Pierce Bird's become available. It's it's a great signing, isn't it? He's uh, yeah. he's a National League defender, probably at, at, at worst, and uh, really harsh on Scott Garner. He's obviously lost his place. I don't think he's been one of the top scorers. Yeah, <laughs> Scott don't, Garner. Don't think he's been absolutely fully fit the last few weeks. But chance when you've got Pierce Bird, someone of Pierce Bird's calibre, to uh, just looking. I think Shields is going to be okay. As bringing Pierce Bird in allows you just to enable those little niggles to to get better. As uh, Craig Singleton says, uh, Luke Shields, he's, he's, he's up. He looks like he's, he's going to be OK. He's uh, slowly uh, just going off the pitch. As, uh, Boston United have this free kick, but there's no, no sign of uh, any of the subs getting ready. So definitely the skipper, and as, as Craig says, it takes an awful lot to uh, for him to come off. And I also can't remember ever seeing him come off. So uh, I'm sure the skipper will be fine. Boston have a free kick, which Fitzsimmons is uh, going to take. We're back underway. We're in the... Uh, half hour mark here at Boston United 0-0 Fitzsimmons will take this one it's a long one looking for Jordan Burrows into the penalty area needed dealing with again by Jones it's a fascinating battle that one James shows Jordan Jordan Burrow and now Alfreton with Rawson are going to try and get on the end of this one Fitzsimmons has uh, come out but that ball will carry out for a goal kick yeah James Jones had a loan spell with us a couple of years ago from oh, was he Salford City I think. yeah I think it was came Salford. in yeah. uh, on loan and, and did pretty well in the uh, Fairly mediocre United side that season, really. It never really got going. I think United sat in mid-table, really, from from August to the end of the season. It didn't really ever ignite, but he did a pretty good job that during was his month that, or two on Was that Craig first full season? That one. Uh, his first full <laughs> yeah. season, yeah. Simmons uh, got away with a, a poor kick there. Platt picks it up in midfield. Reeves now for Alf does it on the left-hand side. He pulls it inside to Bobby Johnson, and they're claiming a foul Luke Shields who's now back on the pitch heads it back to goalkeeper Fitzsimmons yeah there wasn't too much there I don't think Alfreton appealing for everything but referee Dean Watson letting it go so, yeah, a lot of claims for fouls from uh, Alfreton he's had a nice flow to the game so far here BBC Radio Lincolnshire and Boston coming forward themselves now Jordan Burrow who uh, skips past one challenge before giving it to Leesley he's running towards the penalty area now Joe Leesley shoots it comes off Lund, Leesley has it again on the left-hand side. Can he deliver across? He can. It's headed away from Jones of Alfreton. And that'll be a throw into Boston. Yeah, Leesley trying to get that ball onto his favoured left foot. One effort blocked, one cross cleared. And uh, here they come again with Duxbury. And Duxbury down the uh, left-hand side. And it's another cross into that penalty area. And this time it's gathered in by the Alfreton Town goalkeeper, Willis. And, and if... Um, one frustration I'd have thought for, for Craig Elliott for Boston is there's been a lot of crosses into that penalty area Craig and not nothing really on the end of them no and the chances that United have really created the two for well the two that Cre Preston's really created for himself yeah they've come from open play haven't they and uh, not a not a cross into the box not a set piece delivery that United haven't made very much of those yet and like you say that'll be one area they'll be looking to improve on as the, the match wears on this afternoon at the moment it is still nil nil 33 minutes played Boston have a free kick one of the African town players I think it was Reeves was offside so Ross Fitzsimmons again 
Don't really have a save to make the Boston United keeper. Just that one chance for Alton from a corner early on as Shields wins that header. Preston now has been the man of the moment for the Pilgrims and it's his ball out to Leesley on the left-hand side. This is good from Boston and here's Hawkridge into the penalty area. Terry Hawkridge pulls it back for Platt. Well blocked again, this time by Bobby Johnson. And now Alfreton will look to try and attack with, uh, with Rawson. And that's a foul by Luke Shields. And that will be, I'd have thought, a yellow card. Yeah, disappointing because Preston had slipped Leesley into cross. And Hawkridge couldn't get his shot away. Alfreton scrambled it away. And suddenly uh, Luke Shields, presumably from that earlier Dan Bradley challenge, feeling a little bit frustrated, has gone and cleaned he's Luke Rawson out. And he's deservedly going to get himself a yellow, yellow card, card in. Yep. Oops, get the yellow card for the skipper, who's uh, shrugged off that uh, potential injury from earlier. But as, as Craig said, another cross and another one in Boston. And one thing that... Alfreton, I feel, have done well, is they have blocked an awful lot today. They've, they've done that well. And there, again, Hawkridge pulling it back. Platt with the shot, blocked by um, number 10, Bobby Johnson. And now it's Alfreton that have a, a free kick just inside their own half. But uh, it's going to be a going to be a long one. Some more defending to do. I think it's Lund who's going to take this one. He's had the, the chance, if you like, for Alfreton. It's a high one in towards the penalty area. Rawson got up, headed it. Uh, towards the penalty area, it was Jones that won the first header and Fitzsimmons gathers it in. Yeah, Boston. Oh, Shields uh, probably dis disappointed when he looks back that he's made that challenge. Because I don't think Rawson was going to outrun him. No. And, uh, no sometimes you make tackles like that because you think, oh, I'm not going to get them, they're going to be in on goal. But yeah, Bird was there. The pace. I don't think it would have led to too much danger, but he made that decision. And, and he's going to have to be extra careful now. A little bit unceremonious in the end. It was uh, definitely a yellow card. 0-0. Nil -nil. Alfton have a throw in. Josh Claxton will uh, take it on the halfway line. Boston, a bit of defending to do here. It's, uh, it's a throw that's been taken, but it's been picked up now by Bobby Johnson. But Boston do win it back. And now Leesley will look to try and bring this one away. The ball over the top, Preston, but out comes George Willis in goal and heads it away at knee height. And in the end, it'll be cleared by Don Smith. It's a long ball needed dealing with by Tuchel, but picked up by Rawson of Alfreton now. Here's Reeves for Alfreton running towards the penalty area. Tuchel with him, but it's Reeves. It's a low ball in. And oh, it's just about dealt with by Boston. But Atkinson picks it up and now Lund for the visitors. Good bit of spell this. A bit of pressure from Alfreton and in the end Boston pick it up with Bird and he will clear looking for the, uh, the run of Preston but James, James, Jones is there and he'll go back to George Willis in the Alfreton goal. Certainly been the game plan so far isn't it? Looking for Fraser Preston looking for him. It's been effective. Into feet pacing behind and uh, not quite come off yet but there's been some really positive moments involving him haven't there and uh, he's had the, the main chances so far. Bird with the ball forward looking for Burrow and then Tom Platt got uh, hit in the face there with the ball I'm sure he'll be absolutely fine and he is Alfton have a throw him and the referee just uh, just stop him <coughs> I think they're just making sure Tom Platt's all right he certainly took it in the face from very close range there Craig and uh, there's you saying sting. he'll be fine telling him to get on with it <laughs> did I say get on with it no, no. quiet <laughs> But I know he <laughs> you just expect him to, don't you? Well, he is fine. He's yeah, just needed he's that five seconds. Referee <laughs> just giving the benefit of the doubt, isn't he? Just checking he was okay. Always got to be careful with these things. And, uh, they sting, they do. When you yeah, <laughs> certainly nice do. Uh, cold boxing it's day right, yeah. today. <laughs> Boston have the ball now with Bird. He's just um, gone long, looking for Jordan Burrow's head. Burrow won it, but Boston couldn't make anything of that. And in the end, it's uh, Alfton, just a little bit of air ball at the moment but Terry Hawkridge brings this one down for the Pilgrims and gives it to Duxbury in the left back position and then he goes long looking for Burrow he's over hit that one and Jordan Burrow will chase this one down but Smith for Alfreton will deal with it as will Willis he goes long but uh, just goes straight to Terry Hawkridge who's sold the dummy to one of the Alfreton players before bringing this one forward Tootle's made a run but Hawkridge checks back and gives it to Tom Platt in the midfield area De Mayo now has it very quiet first half for Connor I feel the Boston players need to get involved in the game more as Duxbury gives it to Joe Leesley, left-hand side. Platt now on the ball for the Pilgrims, gives it to Leesley. Running down the uh, left-hand side, Joe Leesley, can he uh, deliver the, the cross? Duxbury wanted it short. Leesley still has it, trying to make himself some space to deliver another cross into that penalty. And in the end, he has made space for delivering a cross towards Preston, who gets his head on goal, and it's straight at the goalkeeper. Wrong man on the end of it, wasn't it? He wanted Jordan. That was Boro, yeah. yeah. he wanted him there to head it. Leasley did really well in the end to, to dig that one out on his right foot. He 
chopped and changed about three or four times, but got the cross in. But Preston never really going to score with a header, was he? It's, uh, it, was, it was a weak effort. He jumped quite, quite well to get it as well, didn't he, Preston? But uh, Boston looking to come forward again. Leesley has been involved a lot early on, and he's looking for the run of Preston. Wasn't the right ball, and that'll go through to the keeper. And you mentioned DeMeo as well, not having much of a kick early today. He's played in a different formation, is he, with being one of the two in a 4-4-2 in the middle of the midfield. He's playing deeper today. He's not quite as advanced as he usually is and not really had as much time on the ball. So it'd be interesting to see if um, Craig Elliott sticks with that formation second half and uh, what substitutions will follow as United try and win this game. And they do win the ball back. Preston may get on the end of this one and it's intercepted well by Connor Branston. Boston have another attacking throw in. So let's try and get a lead before half time. Seven minutes to go, nil nil. The Pilgrims coming forward now. Preston, another really good turn from Fraser, Fraser Preston. And this time, um, well, he crosses it and it goes into the uh, the gravel and that behind the goal. Yeah, not uh, not his finest hour in this <laughs> game, was it? But uh, finally got the opportunity to attack down the left-hand side on his left foot, but got far too much on it. And it landed in the building site. There we go, I know I was going to get the teams wrong. The Alfreton goalkeeper takes the uh, the goal kick. It's Tootle who uh, ends up winning it for, for Boston. And DeMeo has it in midfield, but it's intercepted by Branson of uh, Alfreton. Nil-nil as uh, the visitors look to come forward. Platter done really well there to win a free kick. Atkinson fouling him, and Boston have a free kick. Good play again from Tom Platt, wasn't it? Just uh, intercepting, as he does. How great is it to have him back? Fit and available. And, uh, even more important, obviously, with Mitch Rose suspended. They obviously played. He, he was one of the players that the, the was it three or four games that he missed. They, they really missed him, didn't they? They did, yeah. And just his whole, the whole package that he brings, really, not just his tackling and his giving it simple to set piece threat. I mean exactly, yeah. Defending set pieces and winning them as well in the opposition box. And you cannot underestimate that. And here come Alfton with Dan Bradley now, and he's one-on-one -on -one with, uh, with Bird, and he, he plays it in. Here's Rawson, there's a chance here, and he drags it wide. Best chance of the game for Alfred and Town. Boston was short on numbers there, and Rawson will be disappointed that he didn't do better. Yeah, good break from Dan Bradley, driving right at the heart of the United team. Picked out Rawson to his right, but never looked like scoring, did he? Didn't look confident, dragged it, and it bob Bradley bobbled across. It yeah, he did. You he's did fancy enough. that with his ability that he's mm. got. That does he take that shot on from 25 yards? He obviously didn't want to be seen as selfish, but um, potentially would have been the better option for Alfreton. Still nil nil. Boston now with the Shields just going to play that one long, looking for Preston headed away. Alfreton just grown into the game. You feel as it as it's gone on. Boston, I'd say for the first half an hour, bar one set piece for Alfreton, were on top. But the last 15, oh sorry, 10. So Alfton have grown into the game. It's a lot more equal as Fitzsimmons goes long. Burrow will try and get on the end of that. Alfton claiming another foul, but Tootle will pick this one up before going back to Fitzsimmons in goal. Five minutes to go to half time. Can the Pilgrims find a goal before the break? Fraser Preston with their best chances. Three in total. Burrow gets up, but again, he's beaten in the air this time. Took him on the back of the head there, Jordan Burrow, but he seems to be okay. Referee happy for play to carry on. Shields now has it for the Pilgrims, plays the ball over the top towards Hawkridge, who's offside. Yeah, United not scored at this ground yet in the first half. Only got the one goal to show so far, and that was obviously an 83rd minute effort for Conor DeMeo last weekend. So they'd like to get this <coughs> first half effort ticked off sooner rather than later, but they've only got about four minutes to do it this afternoon, less than four minutes now. It's the thing with a, a new ground, is there's so many firsts, and you just want to just want to tick and so you don't, you know, it don't become a, an issue. I know, obviously, scoring first half, I, I once thought it would become an issue, but the, the league win, the the, the, fir the first win in 90 minutes, there's, there's a few, mm. you just want to get them ticked off. Yeah, I wouldn't necessarily be too worried about scoring first half. I guess the key today is scoring first, because if you do that, the... Uh, yes, I think the game will be a lot harder. You imagine whoever score scores first. first today is realistically probably going to have a great chance of going on to win this game. So you don't want to go a goal behind, especially against a side is defensively resilient at times as, as a Billy Heath side. And Alfreton to me at the at the back, yes Boston have, have had a couple of chances but I, they, they seem very organised and, and effective at what they're, what they're doing. 
Yeah, and you'd which is no surprise. No, exactly. You look who the manager is, and some of his trusted players from over the years are with him. They don't let him down. Um, they might not have won too many games of late, but they've had a few draws, and if they've lost, it's been by the odd goal. They don't give a lot away. And, uh, it's yeah, been their a hallmark of his um, Ferriby and, and Halifax mm. teams as well. Seven, it's seven games without a win, just one away game, one away win all season. That was at Telford. Um, lost four of the last five away and just one clean sheet all season, which is also at Telford. Um, so the, the stats favour Boston. And here they come with Jordan Burrow now. Can he get past his man? No, he can't. But he does win a throw in for the Pilgrims over on the far side. They were one up against Chorley at home um, two weeks ago and uh, deep into yeah, injury time game. Yep. and they it would finish 1-1 but if you see the penalty incident the penalty that surely were awarded it was uh, Danny Clark who's actually on the bench for Alfredton today had slid in and, and won the ball and uh, oh. referee said penalty so you say that we say they're winless but they should have won that day they didn't but they should have done they were and that was against the Chorley side who'd come here and won fairly convincingly yeah. the week before so Charlie are one of, the, one of the good teams in this division, so to get even a point and should have had three is a sign that improvements. They knocked out by Kings Lynn in the, the trophy last week. But yeah. they're, they're a good side. I think, like we said, their position is pretty false. They won't they won't be there, I'd have thought, at the end of the season. No, I wouldn't have thought so. I'd be very surprised. But in this season of all seasons, you just don't know. Who do you? can predict <laughs> no. what's going to happen? No, and uh, Boston United uh, looking to get Fraser Preston on the ball now, left-hand side of the penalty area, and towards Burrow. Jordan Burrow, has got his back to go, looking for support. Here it comes through to Terry Hawkridge. He pulls it back. Can Boston put this in? Oh, no, they can't. It's off the line. It was Jordan Burrow with the an effort, and there's Duxbury, and there's another block. And Alfreton Town hanging on there. Here comes Duxbury again on the left-hand side. Can he deliver across? He's going to have to get it onto his right foot. It's another ball in. He's headed on by Burrow. Yes! It's into the net. And it's Joe Leesley, not Jordan Borough, who got his head onto the ball. 45th minute. Boston and, uh, United, first goal in the first half, 1-0. <laughs> there, there you go, fully deserved. That uh, mad, mad, mad few seconds with DeMeo and Borough both denied on the line. But Joe Leesley getting up to glance that in from Scott Duxbury's inviting cross. Unfortunately, though, Luke Shields is down again. So whether that's uh, going to be a concern for United, whether they can get through to half-time. But whatever that injury was that he picked up in the instant with Dan Bradley. Scott Garner's undergoing a warm-up, but uh, yeah, United finally lead, and there we go. They've ticked the first half <laughs> goal off, and the first time they've led in this stadium. Like I said, you get these these records, and you just need to get them ticked off the first. And Boston United, that goal, they it deserved really, really good bit of pressure. We've got two minutes of stoppage time, which will start once we uh, make sure Luke Shields is okay. Uh, so it was Joe Leesley that got his head on the ball. Apologies, I, I could have sworn it was Jordan Burrow and. Uh, Scott Buck Duxbury with the cross. Joe Leesley leaping high. It's a really good header looping past George Willis. Boston deserve lead. 1 0 up. And we have two minutes to go until. Uh, sorry, two minutes of stoppage time to play until half time. And uh, Alfreton kick us uh, back underway as uh, Boston United will just look to get through to the half. Luke Shields is uh, back on the pitch again. That's twice now he's received a bit of treatment, but he's back on the pitch and he seems okay. As uh, Craig Singleton said, Scott Garner warming up. And I'm sure they'll assess the situation at half time. George Willis, the Alfreton goalkeeper. But, uh, happy to just keep the ball, it seems. And uh, looks like both teams are, are ready for half time. Willis that, then goes long. Sorry, Craig. No, sorry, I don't think United want Shields to be doing too much running, do they, till they can get him in at half time and strap him up for whatever seems to be wrong. But. Um, you don't want him to come off, but I suppose if uh, he's on a yellow card as well. Yeah, if you're going to uh, if you're going to use substitute, if you're going to lose him on any day, you may as well do it when you've got Scott Garner in mm. reserve. So, a very good replacement indeed. And Boston have a throw in on the halfway line. We're just looking to to wind the clock down. They lead by one goal to nil. Joe Leesley with the header, right on half time, to give them a deserved lead. They've had the chances, and now one of the Alfreton players, Bobby Johnson, is going to receive a bit of treatment. And Leesley, one of those. Six United players who did used to play for 
Alfreton, so uh, he's come oh, back he's to, to score against haunt his former club. Uh, the former Alfreton man scoring for Boston against Boston's against Alfreton's former Boston keeper. So struggled, connection. Struggled to get that one out there. That was, <laughs> connect, <laughs> that was a tricky know, one. I started it. I didn't know why I bothered. <laughs> but uh, connections everywhere today, as we say, between <laughs> these two clubs. There is a substitution. Yes, it's um, for Alfreton. So number fifteen. Toby Lee's former, another former pilgrim, another <laughs> one for here, you there. There we go, another <laughs> one. Um, and He's, uh, at the moment, Bobby Johnson's receiving uh, treatment. I'd, I'd be interesting to be see how this um, pans out there because Toby Lee's is a centre half. So Bobby can Johnson. He, can he pop, can he play up front? Well I can't remember if I've seen him up front. Well, Johnson's sort of been in in behind the striker, so I, I wouldn't imagine so. But um, Looks like a change of uh, change of shape for the visitors, which I'm sure they'll sort out more at half time. Here's the sub. Number 15, Toby Leeds, replaces number 10, Bobby Johnson. There you go. Very uh, very loud tannoy system here. Very clear though for for Boston United. And when this is uh, full of fans, it'll be a very effective one as well. Boston have a throw in on the halfway line. Duxbury fake to go back to his keeper before going long, looking towards Preston. And it's cleared away over the stand opposite us. It's uh, not quite finished yet. And so we have to use another ball, which will be taken... Uh, sorry, another throw in, which will be taken by, by Duxbury. And he takes it, looking to, towards the head of Jordan Burrow. It's headed away by Bradley of uh, of Alfreton. And there's Pierce uh, Bird to hoof it into the stand. And there goes the half-time whistle. So Boston United 1-0 up, deservedly so. Joe Leasley with a header right on half-time. Fraser Preston with three really good chances for Boston. The only thing really created by Alfreton was a, from a set-piece. Adam Lund with a header, which he really should have done better, heading it wide. And the Pilgrims will be delighted to be leading because at half-time here, Boston United born Alfreton nil. And Craig, Craig Singleton, very briefly, how do you feel that first half went? To plan, really, wasn't it? United survived the one or two scares that did come that way, created plenty of chances in the end and deservedly lead through that Leasley header right on half-time. Okay, thank you, Craig. We'll be back for the second half, but at half-time here, it's Boston United 1, Alfton Town 0. to go Sam yeah I'm ready about to kick off welcome back to the second half here at Boston United's home ground Drakeman's Community Stadium for commentary. Boston United against Alfreton Town. We have just kicked off for the second half. Literally, the second he came to me, the referee blew the whistle. Boston United leading 1-0 through Joe Leasley's headed goal right on half-time. Both sides have made a substitution at half-time. Boston, as we as we feared, Scott, uh, Scott Garner's had to come on for Luke Shields. That was an injury picked up midway through that first half. We, we hope he's OK. Garner's on and wearing the, the captain's armband as the, the Pilgrims attack with a a thrown and Nicky Walker another former pilgrim is on for Alfreton I, I didn't see who went off for Alfreton but we'll have a look in a minute as Boston coming for themselves now Leasley it's across into the penalty area Hawkridge now will try and do something for the pilgrims looking for, for Platt did well to get that back to Terry Hawkridge and he was facing the wrong way before going back to Scott Garner and it'll be his ball for that's uh, that's charged down by Josh Claxton now and uh, Garner in the end has to give away a throw in. So Craig Singleton, the Boston United club secretary, is alongside me for this second half. And uh, Craig, uh, a change for his team. First of all, Luke Shields going off, and uh, we hope that's not too serious. Yeah, you do wonder if it might be, though, because you never see him go off injured, do you? We were saying it first half. Um, but perhaps precautionary as well when you've got a centre half as good as Scott Garner sat there. You, you may as well use him, particularly with another game on Monday. So hopefully he'll be fit to return against Farsley. And uh, yeah, I think it was Nicky Walker for, for Dan Bradley they were saying that's gone off. So um, quite a high profile down. change as well for for Alfreton. Again, you'd, you'd probably think that was an injury as well. But Boston are coming for themselves now. Joe Leasley gives it to Tom Platt. He's uh, looking to 
create something before giving it back to Leesley. There's a real high press early in this second half from uh, Alfton Town. Garner, though, will go long. He's ever hit that, but Alfton don't deal with it. Here's Jordan Bourne out. They're into the penalty area. It's going to be a shot from Dogsbury, and it goes wide for a goal kick. Yeah, Jordan Burrow did well to get on the end of that, but sort of took it away from goal, and then Duxbury coming in looking for the goal for the cameras, but not uh, not close to threatening George Willis. And United still lead by a goal to nil. So we, we spent a lot of the um, the first half talking about former pilgrims. We've talked about George Willis, James Jones, uh, and we've seen the other two in the squad now. Both both come on for Alfreton. So. Nicky, Nicky Walker, he, he, was, he was top scorer here, I think, a couple of seasons ago. Uh, Craig, he, 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 he's a threat, isn't he? He is, yeah. It's, uh, it was. <laughs> it's not Bradley who's gone off. Sorry, it's Dan. Looks like it's James Jones from what they're saying. So I don't know where Dan Bradley is. Boston have got the ball at the moment in uh, attacking. We'll try and work that out in a minute. As Leesley has it on the. Left hand side gives it to Duxbury. Duxbury, does he run that one out? No, he's, he's still going, Duxbury. And in the end, <laughs> ends up falling on the player with him, and that's a, a foul. So, let's uh, try to work this out. So, James Jones has gone off. Yeah, looks like it. So, they're saying. So, Toby Lees has now gone into the back four. Yep. So, it's. I can't see a way down. Oh, Dan Bradley is here, number eight. Yeah. So, Jones is so number five. So, one, one ex pilgrim for the other, Nicky Walker for James Jones. But, yeah, like you say, Nicky Walker. Ironically, in the season that Nicky Walker was top scorer, George Willis was player of the year and captain, and they're both now in opposition, so it's funny how football quickly moves on. But yeah, Nicky Walker, real quality on the ball, um, just perhaps not consistent enough for, for Craig Elliott's liking last season, ended up on loan at Gainsborough. He was back for the playoffs, but uh, didn't feature. And uh, another one who'll be having a, perhaps a point to prove this afternoon. He's, uh, he's another one that's... Uh Again, very good at Gainsborough. I remember a hat trick he scored away at Atherton Collar is for, for Gainsborough Trinity. But anyway, Boston United are coming forward. Hopefully he won't have much effect this afternoon as Terry Hawkridge has the ball, gives it to Scott Garner. I'll run through the two teams uh, in a second. In fact, we'll start now. Boston United, so it's the one change to start with from the side that drew last week. Connor DeMeo in for Paul Green. But they've also lost captain Luke Shields. Uh, we presume it's an injury. That's a really good ball. Boston are, are coming forward. Here comes Tootle now. It's his ball into the penalty area. It's headed away. Boston trying to grab that second goal as Platt picks it up on the uh, the edge of the area. And they're coming forward again now with Terry Hawkridge running to, towards the penalty area. Now Tootle right hand side. His cross is blocked. Tootle will let that go out for a throw. But that all started, Craig uh, Singleton, from a really good long range pass from, was it Burke? Yeah, I think it was out to the right flank. Certainly got a good range of passing on that left foot. Very Boston good are, are in the penalty area again with Terry Hawkridge. And as he won himself a corner no the ball's still in Hawkridge still has it over on the far side and he's got plenty of options Terry Hawkridge and he always seems to make himself that space and there's a ball towards the penalty area it's headed away Boston trying to do something with Garner another claim for a foul this time after and get the free kick so just going through that team so so Boston the the, uh, the team now is Ross Fitzsimmons in goal at the back it's Matt Tootle Scott Garner who's gone for Luke Shields Pierce Berg and Scott Duxbury midfield so it's a 4-4-2 in the first half so it'll be Leesley on one side Hawkridge on the other with DeMeo and Platt in the middle with Jordan Burrow and Fraser Preston up front Alfreton will go through their team in a second as, uh, they pick the ball up in midfield Dan Bradley plays it forward intercepted by Garner Burrow gets up Boston United remaining subs Paul Green Jay Rollins Peter Cook and Terrell Warren Duxbury now has it in the left back position. It's his ball. Looking for one of the runs. It'll be cleared by Toby Lees. Duxbury will take that throw. And so Alfred have had to make two changes. Toby Lees and Nicky Walker, former Pilgrims, have come on for Bobby Rob Bobby Johnson and James Jones. And uh, going through their starting lineup, we're going to break in play because Boston have the ball with Duxbury on the left hand side. The uh, the man who has cross created the only goal of the game for Joe Leesley. Alfton get this one clear. Boston win it back. Tom Platt battling away in midfield, running towards the penalty area. Now Leesley left hand side, he's into the penalty area. Leesley, can he make something uh, of this? It comes back to Platt. He shoots near post and it goes into the back of the net. Tom Platt drills it past the keeper. <laughs> And it's Boston United 2, 
Alfred and nil. 52 minutes and Tom Platt makes a telling impact and his third goal for the Pilgrims. That one against his former club and a uh, real boost for the Pilgrims at the start of the second half. They've been on top once again. And they now lead by two goals to nil here at the Jakemans Community Stadium. It's a deserved lead for, uh, for Boston as Alfred look like they're going to bring on their third sub of the afternoon, Jake Day. Uh, he's going to come on, as Greg says, 52 minutes gone. Boston now 2-0 up. A really good finish from Tom Play. Drilled it into that near post. And it was past George Willis before he could even move. So um, Luke Rawson, number nine, he's going to go off for number 16, Jake Day. And the, that's all three subs they've made. It's uh, early in the game, isn't it, to have made all mm. three. But Jake Day is a big big unit coming on up front. So you can see what Alfreton's intentions are going to be here. If, if well, they've got to go for it, haven't they, really? If that even deviates from the way they've played so far. But uh, he's a real big presence and he'll look to give Garner and Bird a, a hard time in this last half an hour or so. It's a header away from Bird. So Alfreton, I, I was just getting around to thinking of their team. So as Boston United looks to try and come forward again. So George Willis, number one. Then you've got two, Josh Claxton, three, Will Atkinson, four, Connor Branston. Uh, James Jones did start, but he's been replaced by Toby Lees at the back. Six, Adam Lund. Seven, Dom Smith. Eight, Dan Bradley. Uh, and then you've got 16, Jake Day. 17, Nicky Walker. And then 11, Elliot Reeves. And Alfton are coming forward themselves now. It's going to be a, a long-range effort that's uh, never going to trouble Fitzsimmons in the goal. It was uh, Dan Bradley with it. And I don't need to go through Alfton Salt because they've all made all three changes already here. As you're listening to the BBC Radio Lincolnshire online commentary and we're on the Boston United live stream. Myself, Dale Story and Craig Singleton bringing you full match commentaries. The Pilgrims 2-0 to the good at the moment. It's, uh, Fitzsimmons looks to uh, take this goal kick for Boston. Going to go long. And uh, Burrow nowhere near that one. Boston, you can feel now it's 2-0. They, they could easily have more, but that was a foul. I think it was Preston and a free kick to Alfred. And it's nice to be at this new ground in a winning position, which we've not been until the very last penalty against Fylde last week. So um, long may it continue. Pilgrims been good value for this so far, haven't they? And uh, they'll probably just fancy one more goal just to make the game safe. Looking for their second home league win of the season, their other one against Telford. So uh, hopefully good run of games coming up. Uh, the next home game is York. No, it's Kettering. Kettering, then, then York. Week on Tuesday, and then... Uh, so we were saying that calendar month full of Saturdays this month. Uh, all four have been here, and then four out of five in January alongside two Tuesday nights. If all goes to plan as scheduled, it'll be six home games in January, one in the trophy, five in the league. So perfect chance to make inroads on, on both fronts. So important that they get a good home form going, the Pilgrims, and heading towards hopefully their first home league win today. 2-0 up Boston United as Nicky Walker for Alfton wins the uh, the header. De Mayo for Boston just tucked it forward and Willis the uh, Alfton keeper will take a touch and pick the ball up. Great great time to get that second goal wasn't it? Just uh, well, the, the two goals have come at great moments. You've got right before half time and then just after they're, they're, they're great times to score. Yeah that's true. I sort of discounted the one before half time but yeah it was looking like nil nil at the, the break wasn't it? Talk, wasn't it for, for both teams I suppose yeah. particularly the sides that have conceded it Billy Heath's obviously now used all his subs within 53 minutes so he's got no further options to really change it personnel wise and uh, I think obviously two of those are down to injuries but uh, well, I'm presuming James Jones was because uh, you don't yeah, usually, you don't usually right. take your centre half off when he's bossed Jordan Burrow area lead you Boston United, it's an effort on goal from Terry Hawkridge and it goes just over the crossbar. He came inside and he smashed it towards goal and it was only just over George Willis's bar. Yeah, I think Willis thought about touching that over, didn't he? But uh, he got his angles right and uh, left it alone. Hawkridge's rising drive, not, uh, not, not on target, not, not requiring the save in the end. Boston have, have got that threat coming forward and just as Craig says, a third goal really just killed this game off. But at the moment, Alfton have got to try and get themselves back into the game uh, themselves. And they they give away a free kick. Jake Day on the halfway line there with Tom Platt. Tom Platt, the scorer of the Boston second goal. Jake Leavesley, the scorer of the first. And again, that second goal really has just, just quietened the game down a bit. It's kind of lost its flow a little bit since the goal, which suits Boston because they're 2 0 up. Yeah, that'll do them, won't it? It's uh, Alfred and the ones who need to make the running now, but United have got their tails up to an extent. They'll be looking for this third goal just to finish it off once and for all. 
free kick on the halfway line. Leasley is going to take it towards the uh, penalty area again. Boston, plenty of players for, but Alfred get this one clear and Nicky Walker for them wins a free kick and they're in a hurry now after the 2-0 down they've got to try and get in and that's a little bit needless by uh, let's see who it was De Mayo De Mayo and uh, other days you get a yellow card for that but uh, yeah I think he just he managed to convince the referee that he'd literally stumbled across the path of the ball and he rather than deliberately blocking it but it was a good uh, a good little interception just to break the play up Alfred have a free kick which Boston will uh, need to deal with and in the end Garner clears away at the second attempt and Alfred have a throw in and we saw in the first half that they, they do have the long throw of the, the number six Adam <laughs> Lund um, but it's going to be it is going to be Lund to, to, to take it yeah, right I thought in. Bradley was going to take that one but yeah, I, left I it. did <laughs> oh, I've just said this about Bradley Lund. was picking the spare ball up as the, as the original got lobbed back from the stand I think it nearly took him out but uh, Here goes. Adam Lund to launch this here goes Lund with the long throw towards that six yard box. Jordan Burrow with another really good defensive header. Terry Hawker should kick this one in for the Pilgrims and he plays a long ball looking for the run of Preston. And can Preston get on the end of this one? He's just uh, he's put his hands on the back of the defender for Alfred and it's a free kick to the visitors. Yeah, not very much in that, was there? But as soon as you as soon as you lay hands on an opponent, it usually leads to a free kick and the assistant over on that far side just giving Connor Branson the benefit of the doubt. Allowing George Willis to, to kick this long for Alfreton. Boston United in, in good stead, coming into a very busy run of fixtures, as, uh, as Craig Singleton said just a few minutes ago. And they go to Farsley Celtic in a couple of days' time. So a comfortable victory would be nice here, as uh, Hawkridge looks to go long with that one, but he's overhit that and it goes through to the keeper. Yeah. Farsley Celtic on Monday. It's, it's um, memories from last season. I think it was a uh, Boston lose. Did, no, they won. Did they go down to nine men? Yeah, four-two win. Yeah, um, how was that? It was a great. It was, it was the was same week as Carl Charlton and Spennymore. And uh, then that was. It was. Yeah, Carl Charlton, and then losing at Spennymore on the Tuesday, yeah. and then going to Farsley on the Saturday. And uh, it was an incredible game. Pilgrims took the lead, pegged back, took the lead, pegged back two-two, and then um, who was sent off? Martin Wolford was sent off for retaliation, and then. United went ahead again, I think. Then Demika Dehaney got sent off for a second yellow, kicking the ball away. He did, he did. And then Brad Abbott. I, oh, I remember ran Brad Abbott's goal. in the 90 whatever minute. Yeah. Uh, and great scenes in front of the. Uh, in those days when we used to have supporters in grounds. It was uh, <laughs> real. Uh, not uh, not that many United fans there that day, but great scenes. Brad Abbott running through, securing the game, and then having a pile on with the away fans behind the goal. Just it was uh, a real memorable victory. It was. It was a very memorable day. I remember the, the pitch was in a, a, a lot of discussion as well. I'm, I'm <laughs> guessing it's better <laughs> now. Well, I, I, I don't know. No, I, I don't know either. <laughs> I wouldn't necessarily put your mortgage on it, but no. uh, <laughs> they, uh, they're, uh, they've they had a reasonable start again. They're, they're in and around the playoff positions. They're uh, another, with all respect, should we call it a big big physical side in the mould of Alfreton, really. So um, they, uh, they get results and... Uh, yeah, it's not, not the nicest place in the world to go, so that often plays into their hands. A tough game for Boston, and they uh, have given away a free kick here. I think Jordan Burrow, who didn't seem to think he's done anything wrong, but the referee obviously saw something, and Alfred have a free kick. And here they come from the back. George Willis, again the goalkeeper, has it. He's seen a lot of the ball today. Uh, George Willis made a couple of good saves, but he's been beaten twice. Joe Leasley... Tom Platt with the goals and uh, Boston now coming forward with Jordan Burrow gives it to, to Mayo Leasley now one of the goal scorers on the left hand side pulls it back to Bird his uh, ball forward was blocked but Boston United have a throw in yeah Leasley Duxbury and no real rush to take that oh, they're both near enough let it go out of play now and it was going to be a Boston throw so Pilgrims leading 2-0 on the BBC Radio Lincolnshire and uh, Duxbury's throw in Hawkridge who's just drifted over to the left hand now, looking to, to get involved and any step overs before he's gone right back to the halfway line. In the end, he has to go back and for all the, the, the trickery, if you like, again, well pressured by one of the visiting defenders as Bird has it for Boston. He's looking for another crossfield ball. It comes off Nicky Walker. Burrow will try and charge it down. It's cleared away. Platt will have a bit of time to decide what to do with this one before giving it to Tootle, gives it back to Tom Platt now, right hand side of the penalty area, it'll be his cross and he's overhit that and he goes out for a goal kick. Yeah, he's getting all giddy now, isn't he? He scored, his, <laughs> scored a rare goal and now he's playing as an overlapping right winger, whipping balls in for fun, so 
good performance from him again. He's uh, done all the nitty gritty stuff anti in front of the back four. And he's got some of the glory today for a change. He's got that second goal and hopefully set United well on the way to that crucial three points. And players, Tom Platt does a lot of the, the unseen jobs, if you like. As uh, Garner wins the header, Alfton bring it down in uh, the midfield area. The ball towards Reeves, he's headed away. Boston have some defenders do. Elliot Reeves, Boston thought he was offside there. It looks like he might be, but it's his uh, back heel and Duxbury goes in and as does Leasley. And the referee's given a free kick for one of them. And Alfreton set pieces, this is where they're a threat, Craig. It is, yeah, Leasley penalised for that foul on Lund just outside the box. Gives United, uh, sorry, gives Alfreton an opportunity to whip this in. Nicky Walker, who's like Leasley really, can deliver with both feet. Presume he's going to take this with his left foot. If you look where he is, I think it's the Duxbury foul. Oh, well, I was going to say, Nicky Walker's <laughs> taking that from a long way out, isn't <laughs> it? it <must laughs> so, yeah, I've probably done Leasley a disservice. There. It's obviously the Duxbury foul, the initial one. So, Nicky Walker left footed for Alfreton, doesn't get past the first man at the near post, which was total. Alfreton has some play to do here as Preston tries to flick it on, looking for the run of DeMeo. He'll try and charge this one down. Good pressing there from Connor DeMeo, but Nicky Walker's going to try and get on the end of this. Boston headed away. And uh, it's a bit scrappy at the moment. Terry Hawker just calms things down before giving it to Duxbury. His ball down the line to Jordan Burrow, well held up by the Boston United forward. Leasley tried to find a run from Burrow, but he was blocked off, and Alfton will clear. That'll be a, a long ball looking for Day, who heads it on towards Nicky Walker, but Pierce Bird will pick this one up for the Pilgrims. Centre half, and again, he's, he's looking for that long pass to the right hand side every time, and again, he finds Terry Hawker. It's an excellent pass. Here goes Matt Tootle now for the Pilgrims. Back to Hawkridge, 2-0 up Boston at the moment, Tom Platt has it Terry Hawkridge has it again as the programs look to try and build something towards Fraser Preston now right hand side of the penalty area, a much quieter second half for Preston, his cross is blocked and it comes out to Tootle Boston pressing for this third goal Platt gives it back to uh, Tootle and he goes back to Hawkridge who's Right back position at the uh, moment and Alfreton win the walk ball back and now and that's a really good inception by Garner and Boston will start again and Bird has it running on to the uh, halfway line before going out to the left hand side of Scott Duxbury he looks to come inside his uh, ball is blocked Bird will do well to win that one at the expense of throwing yeah Nicky Walker looked like he was just the favourite to win that ball but Bird responded got his foot in there cleared the danger and just ensured United could get back into the shape, enable them to defend this set piece. It's the long throw that's coming from Lund. And, uh, Boston United win it back through uh, Garner, but uh, Alfton have it again, and Garner heads it in again. Garner, a half time sub for, for Luke Shields, the captain going off injured. That looked like a foul by Duxbury on Reeves, it is, and Alfton have another chance to get the ball into the penalty area. Yeah, Platt, sloppy pass for once. You don't very often say that, do you? Just played Duxbury into trouble, but. Uh, Deep free kick delivery here, which Lund is going to take for Alfreton. He's uh, been more adept at the long throws, but he's going to deliver a set piece with his foot this time. Well, he's not actually. It looks like it's going to be Connor Branson coming they across. They keep doing this to us, don't they? They keep, keep changing their mind, and it is Branson with this free kick, right footed towards the penalty area. The bunch of players all jumped up for it, and in the end, Terry Hawkridge in the right back position. He's clear, and so he's charged down. And Day has it now. It's his cross for Alfreton, and Boston just need to clear this, and Duxbury does. And uh, that'll be a throw in near the home dugout. Defended that well, didn't he? Just let it come across his body, hooked it away with his left foot, and uh, alleviated what could have been a troublesome issue for the Pilgrims, but dealt with it pretty well. Day's cross dealt with well by Duxbury. I'm sure Day's the one they'd have wanted on the end of the cross, not the one crossing it, but uh, Bird gets up for the first header. He gets up for another one with uh, Walker. Boston just calm things down a bit, and Duxbury now will look to try and clear he comes inside for clearing with his right foot and um, again Alfton just slowly coming into the game but they are 2-0 down Boston Joe Leith is just before half time Tom Platt seven minutes after half time really good times to score for the Pilgrims as uh, Willis goes long and that'll be a free kick to Boston a foul by Day on DeMeo there's a great stat from Christian James, our statsman. All three of Tom Platt's three goals, oh sorry, all, all of Tom Platt's three goals for Boston United have come at home against sides beginning with the letter A on the 26th of the month. Wow, that's great, that's it's great. That's not too hard to research, is it? Because his previous two goals were both against Altrincham. 
in the same game. But it's a good start, isn't it? <laughs> but it sounds good. It's going to sound good if he gets another one today. And it's two lots of two yeah. against teams at the beginning of the day. And, and we'll be expecting him to score at Alfreton then, won't we, as well? So Leasley has it. Left-hand side, sorry. Cross ball into the penalty area. Preston can't get on the end of it, and it'll be cleared. That sorry, wouldn't Craig. be on the 26th of the month. We'll yeah. leave that one there, should we? Had to narrow that. Yeah, sorry. But he's not renowned for his goals, is he? But he's uh, renowned for being the man to intercept in front of the back four and do that horrible work that goes unnoticed. But uh, but it was, it, as we said earlier, it was it was very noticeable when he wasn't in the squad. Absolutely, yeah. If you look at the United results during that period, I think the only team that they beat was um, Blythe Spartans. And with all respect to Blythe Spartans, they're a, a drift at the foot of the league. So you you shouldn't necessarily need your holding midfield and midfield player at that, uh, in that game. Spots for United looked like they were going to get through there but there was a, a flag up. The referees wave play on. Terry Horthridge was offside but one of the Afton defenders had the ball and uh, oh, DeMeo on uh, Nicky Walker there. Referee said it was fine and then there was a, a late one from uh, Smith and the referees just letting it go, letting it flow. Um, who knows, we may get a bit of, bit, of, uh, bit of niggle in this game in the last, what we got. 23 minutes to go but Boston are 2-0 up and uh, doing a, a decent job at the moment at seeing this game out as the Pilgrims look to try and progress up the table Leesley now has it, gives it to Jordan Burrow, he can't do anything with it and he's well tackled and now it's the visitors that are, are coming forward and Day will try and get on the end of this one for Alfton, Garner's out there and Day's first touch takes him into the penalty area down he goes, it was a tackle by Garner it's a penalty to Alfreton uh, it looked like a penalty. Garner, he, Jake Day got the wrong side of him. Garner put a foot in. He didn't win the ball. And it's a penalty to Alfreton for them to try and get back into this game. Yeah. It's, uh, penalty for you? Yeah, I don't think he got the ball. No, I don't think he did. Slid in a little bit clumsily. And uh, Day is not exactly a, a whippet, is he? He's a big <laughs> lad. But uh, he showed enough to get away from Garner. And uh, he's, he's going to get any yellow card. No, I don't think he, he is. Yep, yeah, yeah. yep, yellow card for Garner, who came on at half time for Shield. So Jake Day won the penalty. He will take it. He came on in the 53rd minute, straight after Boston's second. He scored three already this season, three goals, that is. Can he add a fourth? Here goes Day against Fitzsimmons, and he drills it against the crossbar, and it comes back to his head. And, well, I thought uh, the reason I went quiet, it seemed to hit the bar, and I thought it was going to bounce in. <laughs> didn't it's a missed penalty and Boston survive and still lead 2-0 I was about to say to you looking at the size of him he's going to absolutely smash this isn't oh, he, he? should have done it, Come well on, he did he Craig. did didn't he you he, he should have said it oh uh, well no what I'm saying is he did absolutely smash <laughs> he it he did it's cracked the underside of the bar and you potentially your day isn't it if you pardon the pun Jake day <laughs> but potentially your day when that happens and the ball doesn't bounce in. You, they've not had a sniff second half of the Alfton and they could have been, first, could yeah. have suddenly been back to a goal behind. And it would have been a totally different game. And, and like you say, he smashed it down the middle. Simmons had dived to his right. Um, and then it hits the bar and you just... Uh, so the reason I did I just presumed it was going to bounce over the line. And then it, it didn't. It came out. Day then went went to head it. He didn't connect with it very well. Boston, in the end, dealt with it. And they've, they've got away with one there, the Pilgrims. Yeah, and like I say, you don't necessarily expect someone of... Jake Day statue to be running in behind and winning penalties, do you? But Garner didn't quite get the ball, I don't think, and uh, United have just had a, a little reprieve there, haven't they? Exactly, and the Pilgrims still need lead by two goals to nil, and it have been a totally different game with that penalty gun in. Thankfully it didn't, as Ducks were now edge of the penalty, area, tries the right-footed curler, but it bends the wrong way. Yeah, he's already come into good effect on that right foot for the Leesley goal at the end of the first half, but... Uh, Still looking for his first United goal, and I think I'd be surprised if it arrives on his right foot. I'm sure <laughs> when he finally gets one, it's going to be well, a, a shot with his left foot earlier. A left footer, <laughs> yes, <Yeah. laughs> <So>. true. <laughs>
Boston leading 2-0 and they're coming forward again now Hawkridge bringing the, this ball forward oh, quite fine press and it was well defended in the end by the, the visiting side and Day who missed that penalty can't quite get on the end of it and Garner and Bird deal with it and it's Bird's ball forward that will go through to George Willis so Boston United as we say they're 2-0 up Joe Leasley Tom Platt with the goals their next game again we'll be bringing you coverage from BBC Radio Lincolnshire away at Farsley Celty then away at Alfreton in the new year uh, as this run of league fixtures carries on they come thick and fast I'm sure Craig will be at every single game Covid permitting yeah and uh, can't make too many uh, guarantees in the modern era can no, you no. fingers crossed touching wood and all that that uh, United can survive any Covid outbreaks can defeat the bad weather and string a real run of games together to get this promotion uh, bandwagon it's firmly rolling hopefully I mean, we've spoken about it quite a few times it's Boston United sorry got some defending to do Lund Walker lets that that dummy they've got some defending to do here with Reeves and it's blocked by Bird and he concedes a corner and Boston not happy that the offside, offside flag didn't go up. But uh, as we wait for this corner to be taken, I'm just saying, yeah, I mean, they've had the two COVID breaks already, Boston. They just need, we say it a lot, a run of games. They do, yeah. This is only the 10th league game, obviously. Uh, if everything had gone to plan, they should have probably only played 14 or 15 by now. But 10 games on Boxing Day. With everything else that's gone on, Darlington, Bradford Park Avenue, all the... All the once in a lifetime things that can prevent you from playing that um, they all seem to have unfolded in this one very strange season. Alfton have a corner, Nicky Walker in a very crowded six yard box there but Boston getting away and Preston's having his shirt pulled there by Will Atkinson that I thought that would be a yellow card, it will, the referee's going into his pocket for a yellow card. Yeah, Will Atkinson's taken one for the team there hasn't he, he didn't want, couldn't afford Fraser Preston to run away from him and uh, ended a pretty promising United break that was instigated by Tom Platt's header. And, uh, Will Atkinson actually had a spell training with the Pilgrims earlier in the season. He could quite easily have been lining up in amber and black today rather than navy and pink. But um, I think United's abundance of midfield options at the time. And when they did eventually go to sign a midfielder, they went for Mitch Rose instead. Who is uh, completing, uh, sorry, still got to complete a suspension, Mitch Rose, today and uh, Monday's game following his sent off against Chester. Fitzsimmons will take this goal kick headed away and uh, Nicky Walker will try and bring this down for for Alfreton but uh, Boston do win it back with Tom Platt and he even manages to turn and play the ball forward to Hawkridge now Boston looking to try and have a third goal leading 2-0 as Pierce Bird brings this one forward the centre half being encouraged to come forward it's still Bird he's going to shoot and it's one of them where your eyes light up but it goes high and wide yeah it would have been some goal wouldn't it <laughs> um, certainly would I think it was, uh, who was that on sliding on him? Lund just did enough to put him off. And, uh, yeah, the shot never never looked like troubling George Willis, did it? So, uh, it was, uh, if that had gone in, he may as well have gone home. He would have never hit a better one. So, as things stand, what are we, 15 minutes from the end, Boston United are certainly climbing up this table today. But I often have this free kick. Won't go on about positions quite yet. There's still 15 minutes to go. Now a chance for Alfred. Shoot, enter the penalty area. What an effort that was. And it goes just wide. And just for a second there, Craig, I thought that was in. Yeah, I did as well. I'm just watching. I think it must have been Bradley. Bradley. Yeah, and we know he can do that. Um, wouldn't have surprised you in the slightest, would it, to see it fly into the top corner. But What's Ross Fitzsimmons didn't move. I think he was <laughs> confident it was going, or he just didn't <laughs> He was either, didn't either confident it. or resigned to the fact that he couldn't <laughs> do much about it. But... Uh, a real hit there from Bradley, but narrowly wide. Great effort. Great effort. So, Simmons takes this uh, goal kick. And uh, Boston look like they're getting a, a third and final. No, a second check. Boston, sorry. Yes, they've made one change. Looking like they're getting a second substitution ready at the moment. <laughs> okay. DeMeo has it. Jay Mitch Rollins, by the looks of things. Belizey now being encouraged to run forward the, the opening goal scorer for Boston gives it to Jordan Burrow and Duxbury's made a really good run and Burrow forced him a little bit wide but Duxbury now gets it onto his right foot plays it into that penalty area it's headed away can Boston get a shot in Hawkridge sliced it and it'll be cleared oh and then another slice and Boston have a corner <laughs> Duxbury's dug another cross out on his right foot hasn't he all the way across to Hawkridge he went for the the glory shot he didn't connect and somehow Dom Smith's managed to shovel that behind no no real need to 
concede a corner. It looks like it's going to be a double change for United. Jay Rollins and Paul Green are coming on. So I think this is United's. Uh, yeah, United. <laughs> is this United's first corner of the second half? We'd counted to six I before. I believe time, so. But I believe so. I don't and recall one. Leasley with it. It's a right-footed uh, in-swinger towards the back post. It's headed across. Oh, and headed off the line. It was uh, was it Bird that the header. And it's a really good bit of defending from the Alfreton man on the line. And it's another corner. Was it Garner, Bird? I think it was Garner. Garner. I think it was Day, who uh, who's obviously just... great header on the line. D Day had got the opportunity to draw his side really back into this contest, but he's just kept them in with the loosest chance and at the, the second other end. corner, Leesley just lands on top of the net. So that, that corner, before we talk about these two subs, which you'll hear in a second, Boston United, Leesley played it in. He was headed back across, and there was Garner heading it towards goal. And, and Jake Day, the centre forward, really good header off the line to stop third goal so here comes Paul Green we are in the 77th minute and Paul Green they're not actually being made I don't think I think he's going to wait for the next stoppage okay I saw the board and it looks like Hawkridge will be going off for Rollins Rollins thank you <laughs> try to think number 11 it's Rollins yeah and Green anyway. De Mayo, De Mayo yeah I, mean, I guess probably um, just solidify things slightly for the last 10 minutes or so to and get like that. I said, we, we talked about the squad numbers and yeah, but what a couple of subs to be able to bring on uh, in Jay Rollins and Paul Green. And here they come. So we're now in the 78th minute. And that's when your squad stretch without Thulis, Rose and, and Thanodge, isn't it? Exactly. Still, still so able to bring on three players of this <laughs> calibre. So as, uh, as Craig said, Jay Rollins is coming on for Terry Hawkridge. And Paul Green. We'll just find out. Just waiting for the board for number two uh, to come up. from injury again and uh, so Joe Leasley's coming off for Paul Green and uh, like I say what a what a pair of subs to, to have for Boston United yep all substitutions used now on both sides Rollins and Green for Hawkridge and Leasley and I think that's probably signifies a, a return to the 4-3-3 now Green just stiffening up the midfield and Fraser Preston and oh he's booked Terry Hawkridge What's all that about? Must Terry, Terry Hawkridge has come off. He's booked him once he's come off the pitch. Mm. What was that for? I was going to say, was it for taking too much time to get across there? But I didn't necessarily notice that he did. He booked him on the pitch, though, wasn't he, for that? I don't know. Maybe. Yeah. Unless he said something or... What a, what a strange, uh, strange booking, that. Boston's third booking of the afternoon. Luke Shield, Scott Garner both receiving yellow cards as well. Hawkridge, as Craig said, he um, came off the pitch and then the referee's gone over and, uh, and booked him. So <coughs> we'll see. Uh, it's be interesting to see what that was for. But anyway, Alfton have a goal kick. George Willis will uh, take this. Boston leading by two goals to nil. Nicky Walker for the visitors now on the ball. Comes out to Reeves on this left hand side. Boston having some defending still. Nicky Walker's going to try and get there, but out comes Fitzsimmons and does really well in the Boston goal. Yeah, yeah. Reeves threaded that ball down the outside and uh, looking for the run of Nicky Walker but Fitzsimons was there wasn't he he's uh, in charge of the situation and he's happy to bowl the ball out kick left footed and get United potentially back on the attack where Tom Platt has the ball in the midfield area gives it to Connor De Mayo now Preston who's back onto that left hand side now as Greg Singleton says they're back to the 4-3-3 so it'll be Preston on one side Rollins on the other with Burrow as the, the man in the middle in the front three. Duxbury's going to take this throw in for Boston United. 2 0 up at the moment. That's a good throw towards Preston into the penalty area now. Fraser Preston looking for to make himself some space. In the first half, they really struggled with Fraser Preston, but he struggled to make that much of an impact in the second half, Craig. Yeah, and on that occasion, again, he's driving into the box, but really on his right foot. He, does, he doesn't like his right foot, does he? He's always trying to get back on his left. Doesn't back himself to, to have an effort with that right foot. He did have one first half, which George Willis saved at his feet. But uh, he just sent one more goal for United. Would absolutely well and truly finish this off for this afternoon. It's the Pilgrims 2-0 to the good here. BBC Radio Luxury Online commentary. We're also on the Boston United live stream. As uh, Boston, I'd say by the penalty, um, Craig, have, have been, uh, much as it, it comes across as sometimes a, a jinx word, comfortable. 
Yeah, second half, they haven't they? They've, uh, you know, if you look back at the whole game, Lund had that header, didn't he, after about 10 minutes from a corner. Rawson was played into a reasonable shooting chance by Bradley, when Bradley probably should have taken the shot on himself. And then obviously the penalty is the big one, into it, with Jake Day yeah. smacking the crossbar. And uh, yeah, apart from that, goalkeepers not... He's not had a save, has No, he, he hasn't, he's no. He's not had a save, and... Um, to me, the only time, yeah, there's the, the been a couple of times I've opened Boston up, but not, like you say, I think it was Rawson in the first half, never, never really looked like scoring. As Pierce Bird takes this uh, free kick into the penalty area for Boston United, Paul Green will just let that go out for a Boston throw, and there'll be no hurry to take this one for Tuchel. No, with the, obviously Garner had gone forward for that set piece, but he's uh, trotting back now to get into a defensive shape. Doesn't We've want Day to get a run on him again. And eight uh, minutes to go? Yeah, eight minutes. Not long for the uh, Pilgrims to get this, get this result over the line and see where they go. At the moment, they are climbing the table pretty much in a very congested National League North table at the top end. Boston looking to try and win themselves a, a corner here. Alfredson get it clear. Garner will have some defending to do here for the Pilgrims against Day. And uh, in the end, it goes out for a throw to Boston. Which go on then, deliver us the telling blow. What? Current position. Six. Six? That high? <laughs> That's what it says. <laughs> it <laughs> on the, the BBC Sport table. <laughs> Um, you're going to double check another one now, are you? But, uh, yes, oh. that's, that's what it is. Sick, it's, uh, really? They're according to this, at the moment, with the current scores, I'll just uh, let the ball go out first. As Boston looks to try and create something themselves, and that's a corner. One, two, that is. Who won that corner? <laughs> anyway, they've got a corner. Some There'll Rollins. Be one, Rollins. One, two, three, four, five. There'll be six teams on 18 points, including Boston. I at guess at this moment the goal difference is good, uh, isn't it? Because Boston's goal difference. Only York, who've also got 18 points, have got a better goal difference. As Boston take this corner towards the near post, he'll uh, he'll have another go. He's, he's take so it all. Yeah, score one more. Take it all back, and Dale. Yeah, sixth, fifth. So football 24 is the app that I use. Yeah, I was thinking you were going to say about ninth or tenth, but no, no, that's, that's, that's mad, isn't it? It just shows how tight this league is. Is uh, Leasley takes, uh, not Leasley, he's gone off the pitch. Boston have a corner, shot driven in from distance, and George Willis had to tip that one over the crossbar, did he? Oh, I thought he touched that. I thought it touched the crossbar. De Mayo. Oh, De Mayo with the shot. I thought I thought he saved it. Oh. Yep. Yeah. Possibly um, Willis got away with one, though. But anyway, it's a goal kick. It's one of them, when, when, when you're in goal, and, oh. and I've been in goal, you're actually slightly gutted that you've not been recognised. <laughs> Of making a really good save. <laughs> he's made a good save, I think, on that occasion. And then from the goal kick, he's kicked it straight out of play to just uh, give United a little bit more respite. Boston's next opponent, as far as the Celtic, will also at the moment be on 18 points. Uh, literally just goal difference, separate the two. How many more games have Farsley played, though? Uh, so Farsley have played 14, yeah. including today. Boston will play 10. Alfred and the visitors will still be third from bottom the moment um, but I think I read before today something like Alfreton were was it 15 points off on, I saw Rob Makepeace put it in his programme notes and their third bottom and their something is it off second or was it no not even that 15 points off top I think off it was top. Wasn't it? Yeah. I mean it just shows how stretched the Alfreton third bottom so it just shows how tight the league is at the moment but uh, and the fact that Craig and I are able to have a, a bit of a chat like this just shows how the game is just 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 dying down now. Boston 2 0 up and heading for a playoff spot at the moment. Yeah, the uh, the last five minutes or so could have been slightly nervy had Jake Day's penalty crossed the line, couldn't it? But uh, exactly. Thankfully, it didn't. It looks like it'll uh, lead to United getting three big points here on Boxing Day. And hopefully, the run can continue at Farsley on Monday. Alfreton, I keep saying Alfreton away next Saturday. And two home games against Kettering and York. So lots of games to come for the Pilgrims. We'll bring you coverage of them all as uh, Bird now has it, gives it to Duxbury. Boston uh, just going to be careful not to give away anything silly here as Day picks it up. Bird, it's a good interception. Day gives it to Nicky Walker of Alfredton. He's into the penalty area now. I've been shadowed by Tootle. Tootle did really well to win that ball back. And Garner will clear for the Pilgrims. But uh, just need to be careful, Boston, not to give anything silly away and now there's something going on off the ball Tootle is, Tootle is on the floor um, I didn't see that did you uh, yeah Nicky, he's only going to go at Nicky Walker for 
just leaving one in on him, I think, and then there was a slight coming together, but I think he was trying to suggest Nicky Walker had lashed out, but I don't think he did. I know Nicky Walker. I don't think you'd I don't think you've got it in him to lash out. <laughs> so we had the uh, the incident of the Chester game, which uh, started with off the ball incidents, so it's uh, very hard to see no, things. It was but, uh, no, it was in the referee there's no cards or anything and uh, I think he just. I think the referee literally just went and told Tootle to get up. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Just get We're just going to get game. on with the game now. Which uh, Fitzsimmons has the ball for Boston United. So it's a free kick for the Pilgrims. They're two 0 up, and we've got just over three minutes to go. Uh, BBC Radio Lincolnshire's online commentary as uh, Fitzsimmons takes it. And like, like I said, the game really has just died down. It could have been so different if Alfton had pulled one back. And uh, Willis in the goal for Alfton now has the ball. I think uh, Tom Platters, it's uh, very rare for him to score, Will. I think we'll have to have an interview with him at the end. <laughs> so, as, uh, Boston, we'll also hear from Craig Elliott. But here come uh, Alfton Reeves now. It's this ball into the penalty area. That's well gathered in by Fitzsimmons. Yeah, good goalkeeping. Garner was unable to stop the cross. and Nicky Walker was coming in, but Fitzsimmons slid out just to kill off any danger and keep hold of that clean sheet for, for himself and, and his United team. It's he who kicks the ball high. And, uh, Boston Preston trying to, to get on the end of it, and that'll go through again to the keeper at the other end, and he just kicks it long. Boston looking to pick this one up now with Tootle on the halfway line. Walker of Alfton charged it down, but Platt has it in midfield, and he's going to look to try and do something, but Alfton win it back, and Nicky Walker now for Alfton will run, looking for the run of day. He just couldn't quite get there, and Duxbury for the Pilgrims clears away. Yeah, Nicky Walker just looking to... Spin in behind, Tootle had another nibble at him, but uh, Walker had got away, but then his ball across, Duxbury mopped up. No way through for for Alfreton as we stand 88 minutes in here. Next thing will be to see how much stoppage time we've got. Boston have the ball with Garner. His ball forward looking for Preston, goes out for a throw in. So Craig, as it's another lull in play, uh, who's been your Boston man on the match today? He's been by... Boston man of the match. Um, it's, a tough, it's a tough one today, isn't think it? Anybody's it's been particularly sparkling, have they? It's just been a good, good team effort. I thought Joe Leasley was lively first half, uh, looking to deliver. He obviously got the first goal, but I, I always hate to see it when um, commentators on TV tend to give man of the match to the the latest goal scorer. But I don't think you could go far wrong from Tom Platt, could you? I think he's done everything asked of him, and on top of that, today he's got the the potentially the game clinching goal. So let's go, Tom Platt. Can't really disagree with you on that one. I think Boston has been a solid performance, and there's not many more solid than, than Tom Platt in this Boston United team. Yeah, not, it's not as if they've been overly stretched defensively, so you wouldn't necessarily pick one of the defenders. But then on the flip side, you wouldn't necessarily pick one of the attackers because it hasn't been that sort of game. Boston are coming forward now. Jay Rollins has it left-hand side. He's into the penalty area. Still, Jay Rollins shoots towards that near post. Can't quite get the power on it, and it's gathered in by Willis. And it was a very similar attempted effort that, uh, that Tom Platt converted at the beginning of this second half whereas Platt just drilled it Jay Rollins just couldn't get the power on it almost seemed to be off balance didn't he after his mazy run he, he, he didn't have the the power to get the shot away but United won't worry too much about that as we tick into the 90th minute George Willis with a fairly routine save and he's had a he's had a good afternoon for Alfton doesn't he, he kept them in it first half certainly did not been overly <laughs> called upon no half. Rollins has it, left hand side, as, uh, about to find out how much stoppage time we've got here. Boston 2 0 up. Rollins pulls it back to Duxbury, and I'm not sure what that was from uh, Duxbury, but it'll be cleared away by Alfreton. Garner just needs to concentrate on this header and does. Bradley for Alfreton picks it up in the midfield area, and now they're going to look to try and bring this one forward. Bit of space for Josh Claxton to run into. Tootle's gone across. Walker's made a run for Alfreton, and here he is, Nicky Walker. Garner gone across, and they did well there in the end, Boston. To to nullify that threat and it's cleared away and uh, Platt, Craig Singleton's man of the match, picks the ball up in midfield and plays the ball over the top looking for the run of Preston headed away, Alfreton pick it up in midfield again, still waiting to see how much uh, time will be added on in this match, we've, we've had the 90 minutes and we're into that now, so ball over the top, Walker can't get on the end of that for Alfreton and Garner. Four minutes. Clear. We've got four minutes to be added up. Of w one of which is almost played yep. on. So, well, a half played, three and a half to go. It's one of them games where you, I think the last one 
Craig and I did together. That it, was, it felt quite a nervy ending, even though Boston had dominated that match. Was that Blythe? It was Blythe. <laughs> Today doesn't really feel like that, unless Alfton can get themselves back into this game. Reeves holds it up. As they're uh, coming for Walker now, left-hand side. Tootle is out there. It's Walker's cross, headed away by Garner. Bradley can't pick it up, but uh, Boston just got some defending to do here. Day has it in the penalty area, but Boston crowd him out, and it'll be cleared by Duxbury. Very well defended there from Boston United. Yeah, just looking like Connor Branson was going to smuggle that through, but United defended it well again, Duxbury. It's another long ball. Walker, who is onside, flicks it on, but... Uh, Paul Green will pick this one up for, for Boston. And uh, Green again in a silly position trying to, trying to, just needs to get rid of this one really. And in the end he gets away with that one, does he? Yes, it's a goal kick. He got there in the end, didn't he? He's uh, got his body in the way to do the business, but couldn't get the job done first time, but persisted. And I think it came off Nicky Walker in the end. He's limping away after that, but United are nearly there. And they've... Uh, Barring the penalty, which Jake Day smashed against the crossbar, they've not had too many, too many scares today, have they? Which is and testament to the way that they've defended once again. And, and I wouldn't call that a turning point either. Normally, missed penalties are turning points. I, I wouldn't even say that Boston were two 0 up, and apart, you know, were were in control. Yeah, I think all it would have done, obviously, Maybe without stating the obvious, at, at two nil, two one rather than two nil, it would have been a lot nervier, wouldn't it? And the way Alfreton play for percentages and, and knocking long balls in it would have only taken one false move, wouldn't it, from a set piece or something, and you could walk away with only one point rather than three, but I think realistically, as soon as that effort did crash the crossbar and United got, got the ball clear, they, they weren't going to give another another major opportunity to the opposition today, were they? Boston have the ball now with Platt, Preston now looking to try and turn in the midfield area, Fraser Preston, that looked like a foul, it is, and it's a free kick to uh, Boston, and that'll be a booking for, I think it's Number seven. Dom Smith. Yeah. So Dom Smith with Alfton's. Uh, is that their first yellow? Uh, no, they had one a little bit earlier. Yeah. Anyway, so Atkinson got booked book 73 minutes. He did, and I've even written that down here. <laughs> so Come on, Dan. <laughs> he did. That was the one he took for the team, wasn't it? That one. Yeah, he took the breakaway, didn't he? But uh, that one. Not so much in that one, but it, it was a foul. Whether it was a booking, I'm not, I'm not sure. We're into the last minute of stoppage time. Can Boston just add a third goal? First ball is cleared. Tom Platt now picks it up in the midfield area. One of the uh, Boston goal scorers. His ball looking for the run of Jordan Burrow, but it doesn't reach him. And it's a throw in to Alfreton. Got about 30 seconds left. 2-0 to the Pilgrims. Uh, let's have a look at the, the current table. And, yeah, it's still putting Boston up into sixth. Which is incredible, really. The start of the day in 12th. So it just shows how tight that table is. And a, a good run of results now for the Pilgrims can really get them up at the uh, top end of the table as Garner clears away. Bradley for Alfreton picks it up. Uh, Duxbury missed that one. Lund now trying to do something. Day now is into the penalty area for Alfreton. Drills it across. Boston need to defend this. Tootle clears it away. It's headed towards Nicky Walker now. What can he do? He's got his back to goal for Alfreton. Walker, there's four, five Boston players around him. And in the end... Uh, it's going to be cleared by Green. No, it isn't, because there goes the full-time whistle. So, uh, the match, Boston United 2-0 win as they move up into the playoff places. The goals, Joe Leesley heading in just before half-time from a Duxbury cross. The uh, second goal, Tom Platt drilling in at the near post at the beginning of the second half. Pretty comfortable victory for Boston. It could have been worse, uh, sorry, harder for them had Jake Day not missed the penalty. But Craig Singleton, some of your thoughts on the game. Job done. Billy Heath has often been a thorn in United's side over the years, wherever he's been. United don't have a very good record against his teams, but from the moment that Joe Leasley scored the first goal today, I don't think there was any doubt about the uh, the outcome. And like you say, buying that Jake Day penalty, which could have made it nervy for 15 minutes, it didn't, thankfully. Um, a thoroughly deserved home win, first home league win here at the Jake Mills Community Stadium, and the first of many this season, hopefully. My thanks, my thanks as always to Craig Singleton for his excellent summarising. It's finished here. Boston United have become victorious. They've won the game by two goals to nil. <laughs>